Hey, welcome to my kitchen. I'm gonna make an abacus seed dish. Uh, it's a special Chinese New Year dish I love so much. My sister-in-law make this during the Chinese New Year and I always longing for this day to come on a reunion dinner where I could join my family and the first thing I would dive in is this abacus seed. And I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. And if you do, please, please share them, okay? Abacus is made of the taro. I don't know the original story of this, how it got the name, but because it, the abacus seed it does look like the abacus, it's round, and then in the center, there's like a hole. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. Uh, I've never done this before. So it's going to be really exciting to see whether I would pass or whether I would fail, alright? The last time when I did the, you know, that cookies, it was a big failure. So don't follow that recipe, alright? But this time I'm going to try and nail it. Okay, let's start. Cooking! Over here, I have some yam. The yam has been steamed for at least 30 minutes. Uh, this uh, frozen yam I got I got from the Asian store. So cut them into cube size. I think I cut them quite big. Uh, it's easier than you steam the whole thing because the whole thing will take a longer time. So just cut them into cube form. Uh, I have this in cube like two and a half centimeters over, uh, and then uh, I just um, never put any water, nothing. Just steam them directly. So 30 minutes, it should look a little bit purplish, all right? So I'm going to put everything together using a mixer. Uh, uh, first, I would pour the abacus, the yam, or you call it the taro. And then, I'm going to be kneading about 200 grams. This is about 650 grams of uh, yam. So I'm going to be needing about 200 grams of uh, tapioca starch. And if you know, wonder what tapioca starch is and where to get them, let me just show you the packaging. This is how it looks like, tapioca starch, all right? So you can find this easily at the uh, Asian supermarket. It's really cheap. Uh, in Sweden, it costs about 13 crown, if I'm not wrong. 12.90, so it's almost 13 crown. Uh, Singapore dollars, you would convert that. That's about two dollar plus. So for us, it's really considered quite, quite cheap. So about um, let me see. Uh, some salt. You need some salt. So I'm going to be adding. Uh, uh oh, no salt, no salt. I'm going to be adding some salt. Where's my salt? assistant here to help me to check my stuff. Uh, some salt, I'm going to put about a teaspoon of salt and then I'm going to add some tapioca starch in here. I'm going to not add too much at one time. I'm going to add just half of it first and see how is it like, right? Because sometimes it's really depending on the uh, how damp is the tapioca. So if the tapioca is really damp, you don't want to put too much. Too much flour. Or too dry, you don't want to put too much flour. So learn from experience, right? Don't put too much at one time. Start out with this first. So you need yam, you need tapioca flour, and you need salt, and you need oil later on. But I'm not going to add that now. I'm going to start um, with some boiling water. Uh, let me see if I can get some boiling water here. I'm going to start to boil some water. Right with my new cooker. And then on it. And you need about 100 uh, ml of water. So this is going to take a while. And uh, I'm going to put the recipes up uh, later so that you can find them in the video description. 
if this is working, I'm going to be making about tons of them. Uh, the carrot cake is steaming still, as you can see. So I have, uh, let me give you a closer look, the close up. Ta da! Alright, the top one and the bottom one. Let them cook. It will take time, but it will be done eventually. So you're going to be adding a little bit of oil. I'm going to add just a little bit of oil. About a, a tablespoon of oil. Oh. And then I'm going to be need about 100 ml of hot water. Now the water is done. So I'm going to be needing about and then again, guys, learn from lesson. Don't put too much at one time, all right? I'm going to add slowly. Just a bit first. And then I'm going to start to mince this. I don't know whether you guys can see. Can you guys see? So it's going to be uh, very chunky now. So you need to add more hot water until everything comes together like a dough. is uh, sticky enough let's see this is uh, a bit too according to my uh, it's not really finely means so I'm gonna mince this again but this time I'm gonna add a little bit more of the tapioca flour just a little more okay and then and then you're gonna grind this again can make them into uh, like a small balls so obviously this is far too sticky so you want to add more tapioca flour right? so I'm going to add in the tapioca flour until I'm satisfied so let me just add some tapioca flour okay, I'm keep the last patch and add everything in Um, set up the table here.
道。That doesn't work. <laughs> okay, my my hand is very sticky, so I I don't want to have a sticky hand. I'm going to wash it, and I'm going to try and fold in. Maybe we should have a channel, the disaster channel, disaster recipe. But I love it. This is gonna be so fun. Let me just see. Was watching your previous video? Was a fried carrot cake? Was it? Yeah, it was a fried carrot cake. It, the, yeah, this is the first time I'm making it. So this is really exciting because this is real time, real situation. Sometimes you follow recipe, and then you don't even know that it works or not, right? So, guys, I'm enjoying this. I love it. It's not that I love to fail, but I just felt like it's. Crazy, some some things happen to us, you know. Sometimes we think about life. Oh, we have a lot of people, crazy people around us, and then sometimes you just get angry. A typo. Uh, oh, is it was it a typo error in mine? Okay, I know. I'll take note on that. So sometimes, like you have people crazy, so crazy, and uh, sometimes it's either right you enjoy it or. You get the, your your ass out from the situation. So for me, I think at this time when I'm turning fifty one, I try to uh, be more positive in everything that I'm doing, 
and I'm feeling. So let's see, right? This is a, not a good, not a good uh, recipe, but I'm gonna try and fix this and see whether it works or not. Okay, this is a tapioca flour. All right, I'm gonna put more of this tapioca flour. Like uh, the other day when I was making this uh, the, the mung bean um, recipe. It didn't turn out well too, uh, and I knew what the mistake was. Uh, I think I mentioned the mistakes on my previous um, video. So I'm gonna try and add a little bit of the tapioca flour. All right, let's hope that this will work. Ooh. Okay. We have to uh, accept challenge. This is like a challenge. Kuchinta <laughs> moody. Are you moody all the time? Kuchinta. <laughs> hey, look like it is working. It's getting drier. So that's really good. Maybe we cannot put them in the what do you call that the the mixer so much, yeah. Okay, guys, look, it's working. <laughs> so I'm going to add a little bit more. Maybe this uh, recipe is going to be like, more like a doughy. It, uh, because this recipe is, uh, the apricot seed is going to be like chewy. So maybe that's the reason. Or maybe, you know, my tapioca was a bit too watery. Okay, I think this is working. All right, so I'm going to roll this out and uh, put them on the put them on this one. Okay, put it on this one. But before that, I have to wipe it dry. tapioca flour on here and then it's so beautiful outside guys I, I, I just feel like going out for a walk later on so let's see okay if I can do a live video when I'm outside walking later at YouTube uh, I'm supposed to be doing two more live videos today one of them is for my patreon uh, my Patreon are the people who are cloud funding me. I'm funding this uh, YouTube channel with my fans that who wants to support my channel. By contributing as little as $1 a month. So I don't have so many people right just yet. Uh, because I've been slacking for the past one year. I've been busy renovating this house this place so I have been really slacking and I'm going to try and be cheaper I'm going to try to drip out everything so I don't waste anything okay everything here so let me just push this one the dough is so soft let me just dip a cutter I need a cookie cutter Okay, it was it a typo error? Then I have to change the error. Thank you for reminding me, telling me that. All right, so I'm going to just put you guys in front here a little bit so you can see me while I make. So you want to make sure that this abacus is uh, soft. Okay, I'm going to roll this one more time and just mix everything together so it's not so soft this is really soft and um, let's see if I can make it less softer 
So let me just put everything together. This is like a massage for the dough. Okay, I think this is done. So I'm going to just roll this out like a long snake, right? Like a long, long snake. I'm going to just cut this off a bit. And I'm going to roll this out into like a snake. Make sure that they are evenly. I'm going to just put more brown. And check my carrot cake <laughs> so it will not burn. Reduce the heat. So I'm going to just roll this out. Alright, I don't know how many centimeters this is actually. But uh, Definitely at least three centimeters in uh, diameters. Three centimeters is about this. Alright, so I'm gonna cut them. And then you make sure that they are round. That's why you have to make a hole. You make a hole in the center like this. Okay, this look like an abacus. So what you want to do is that you put them in a tray. Let me get a tray. Find a tray. And then you want to put the flour. You want to put the powder on the tray. And then put the abacus in there. So make sure that this is round. Okay, about 3 centimeters in terms of diameters like a snake so now you just keep cutting it all right cutting it one it's just like the italian uh, pasta <laughs> to me i found i'm just gonna roll this a little bit wrong This is like getting not so pretty, yeah? So you want to join them together. Mm -hmm. Again. I don't like them when it is not round. I wanted this to be round. Okay, let me just try and do this one more time. Come on, give me the round. Round, round. I like it to be round. So just gently to be gentle with them. Okay. Got them. So that's it. And then you want to roll them a little bit and then just make this a hole in the center. Feel like this is a bit too big so if you find it's a bit too big just take out the roll and never mind just roll it again and then make a hole in the center you have to feel it right if it's too big then you make you make them smaller so this is going to take some time to do this of course and uh, if you like you to continue to watch me please do join me i try to answer your questions about my youtube channel uh, if you are just subscribing just uh, new or haven't subscribed i hope you do that would love to have you as my subscriber it's for free uh, and sometimes i do uh, live streaming not just on facebook i do some live streaming on my uh, YouTube like now most of my recipes at uh, YouTube are very short from the previous uh, year uh, because I noticed YouTube people don't have time to sit there and uh, spend one hour right they want to learn and then up they are gone 
So I understand that. So if you don't have time to watch me, it's fine. You can always watch the replay. And the one thing good is that you can forward it. <laughs> That's what I do all the time. So it's understandable. It's too big, all right? So I'm going to make it smaller. Okay, let me tell you guys stories, all right? You guys, uh, you guys know me uh, for being... Uh, liking to uh, relate stories in my cooking uh, some people they think that my story are interesting because I come from a very exotic background let me just push you here so you can see me while I'm working at the same time all right so you can see me too let me just see but I don't know if I can read command I'm just trying my best all right and I'll see if I can read the comment. Let me get my chair. <laughs> my chair. And then if I see if I could read some comment here. Um, yes, I come from a, a very multi um, cultural background. Uh, some of you guys probably who have followed me know that I have four grandmothers uh, from four different countries. Uh, my background is uh, Malay, uh, Chinese, Muslim, a bit of uh, Panarakan. Uh, my cooking is uh, usually quite Panarakan. I follow uh, the Panarakan recipes uh, because my mom is a Panarakan. Uh, and it's like very interesting because uh, I've been staying in Sweden like 20 years now uh, and I start to appreciate the way the Swedish people cook food because uh, nowadays people don't have time to be in the kitchen and uh, I always question myself in the past hey how come Swedish people are so lazy you know they don't spend time in the in the kitchen uh, we Asian we have to slot like hell you know just to make a reunion dinner it's like two two days in advance you have to prepare right my family, I remember my mom used to prepare food like one week before so for this big event. So to, for us, it's like, um, it's really special. And my mom always said that you make food out from your heart. Uh, and by, by showing people that you really put in a lot of effort in making food, it shows that you really appreciate the person. So just like in reunion dinner, that's what the Chinese do. We... We spend a lot of attention, a time in uh, creating a uh, food for our family. So I think that's lovely. Uh, and and I, I, I and after staying here like for twenty years, I start to realize, oh my goodness, the sweet people they are quite. Uh, uh, they they don't have time, you know. And and I start to realize that their way of cooking, the technique is. Uh, actually very smart because uh, they don't spend time and I try to incorporate Swedish way of cooking into Asian food and that makes my recipe faster <laughs> and uh, hopefully you guys find it's easy to follow I would love for you guys to be successful in your own kitchen too so and it's it's like um, not just a normal cooking show it's like you know, you guys meet me, I, I'm a real person, uh, a Singaporean living abroad, uh, and uh, I actually have, um, not say a lot of experience, I, I'm exposed to, uh, from an Asian culture to a European culture, uh, and I think life is totally different. Uh, even up to today, still a lot of people ask me, Hey, why do you want to move to Sweden? You know, it's so cold there, the culture is, uh, the people um, are cold. And, no, I don't think so. They are cold. The weather is cold, but not the people are cold. But the people are really, really friendly and nice. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have been staying here for like 20 years, to be honest. I really like this place uh, because uh, of the people and uh, because of the society, the system, everything is working really well. Uh, 
And I, I love the television program. I've been watching quite a lot of television program lately. Uh, and I noticed that uh, it's really interesting uh, how the Swedish people behave and how they react. So I hope I can um, give you guys more uh, insight, uh, feedback about my experience being an Asian living here. So Chinese New Year is a day, is a time uh, which is next Wednesday, uh, usually by Thursday. If I'm not wrong, it's Friday, right? The Chinese New Year uh, Eve. So usually my mom is probably busy already now for the past. Uh, if she is still alive, she probably will be very busy doing food. So I really, really miss my family food. Uh, we were actually planning to go back to Singapore uh, in April um, to collect my passport for two reasons. I want to collect my passport and I'm also uh, wanting to visit my family because I haven't celebrated Chinese New Year with them for a few years now and I really miss them. Let me just put this. So I am planning to go to Singapore uh, in April and those of you who wants to uh, visit Singapore uh, but you don't know what to see where to go uh, I hope I can do some live video or at least some video so that you guys can um, follow me in my stories uh, my, and my feedback about visiting Singapore but I'm gonna cut them smaller this time because it was far too big It was so big. Very difficult to concentrate and <laughs> talk at the same time. Because I want to cut them in a very even size. I don't want them to be some big, some small. Then you have to have more work, you have to do separate them again, like I did before. So let me just finish chop cutting this. And then I'm going to continue our chat. And I'm going to tell you what I am planning to do, right? Uh, it's not just Singapore, uh, me and LG are planning to visit. We are planning to visit Thailand too, and hopefully Malaysia. So those of you who are planning to come to this country, could definitely follow us uh, in this adventure. Uh, you know guys, we like to eat, right? And my, food, my channel is all about food and travel. So I'm going to be trying my best to do as much, get, get as much information as possible so that you too will find it uh, useful uh, and that you can, you are able to visit Singapore uh, yourself, you know, you don't have to go by the travel group because I always believe that uh, when you travel, it's the best is to go on your own, unless you do not know the country well. Uh, Singapore basically is a country where everybody speaks English and I'm sure you don't have any problem speaking English if you found my channel because my channel is only English speaking uh, channel and, uh, and uh, in Singapore there is not a problem at all to move around because uh, everywhere the sign, the road sign, the, the information, everything is in English and sometimes you will find them in other languages uh, too, uh, some information. Okay, so this is going to be boiled. Uh, and it's going to be stir fried later on. And I cannot wait to taste this because uh, this really is one of my favorite food from Singapore. Uh, especially my sister-in-law, she likes to make this. She's a hakka. A hakka is a uh, is a, uh, a dialect. Uh, it's a culture, hakka culture. 
and they are quite good in making all sorts of food and mostly food, not so much of a dessert, but a lot of food. So her mom is, my sister-in-law, her mom is a real good chef. And I, it's a pity that I didn't learn from her uh, when I was there. But you know, I always taste of food and I always ask my sister-in-law, hey, how to do this? And then, you know, she tried to be a bit secretive, you know, she won't tell you exactly. But nowadays, you know, you can find recipes all over the internet. So, search for the best one. When I Google, I always search for the best recipe, you know, on Google. Or uh, somebody has reviewed the recipe. So, it will be really good if you uh, found a blogger uh, that has the recipe and also people who have tested the recipe and what they personally feel about. So my channel, uh, I just realized that uh, I'm getting more and more comments nowadays uh, from people like yourself watching. Uh, sometimes you may have some question at the back of your head and sometimes you may be too shy to ask. Uh, don't feel shy, you know, I'm, uh, maybe I will not reply you immediately but because uh, I'm working in the daytime, uh, but I will definitely come back to you on your question if this is a question uh, usually people say oh I like your recipe good and all that and I'll just give a thumbs up <laughs> that is to show my appreciation uh, I, I really enjoy my day job uh, now uh, it gave me a, a lot of time to learn thing, new things every day and I really enjoy that hey, this is getting a bit crowded here <laughs> hey I can't show you I can't wait to show, start frying this uh, but before we fry we have to boil this so let me just get the water boiling all right I'm going to boil some water mm, this water cooker is not it's not so good press them quite hard so you need to have some boiling water so this is going to be done so I'm going to put everything so we don't have to wait let me just boil the water oh my goodness I was frying some shallot here and I've forgotten about that okay lucky 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 I come back to this top. Okay, never mind that. This is done. So I'm going to just put a pot of water. Okay, so I'm going to boil some water. And put it here. Oh, I'm going to put it here, doctor. Put it here. A bit crowded here too. Okay, now I'm gonna buy some water and then let's see if I can speed up. <laughs> I love to hear uh, you guys um, from you. Uh, what do you think about my channel? And uh, if there's any that you are interested to learn or offer my 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 feedback I would love to hear from you uh, and don't be shy if you like to request for some recipe I would love to have uh, you written to me and I can look into that and see if I can find the ingredients here <laughs> some of the ingredients not easy to find here especially uh, things that uh, Asian is still quite okay I am not complaining about the Asian supply but uh, uh, Ethiopian uh, or European ingredients uh, is not that difficult either I think ingredients from India is much more difficult or maybe Vietnamese uh, Vietnamese uh, recipes are, are quite difficult 
the ingredients are quite difficult to get. So I think I'm almost done guys. I just have about 10-15 more to go and I'm done. I'm going to put it here because it's so crowded. Maybe we have space. Let's see. start to boil this. All right, I'm going to bring you closer so you can see how it looks like in the boiling water. And then you need some oil. You need to get a bowl of oil so that the abacus will not stick to each other. Let me just make the last one here. go to the stove here and you are going to follow me for sure right okay let's see if you guys can see or not okay, the water is boiling so I'm going to just put number nine on this no not, not, not this one number nine on this one and I'm going to get the water. Hopefully this will speed up. You need to have uh, quite a bit of water. Fill up the pot with water. And then, I'm going to explain to you what are the ingredients we need. Right? But let me just cover this so that it will boil faster. And if you like, you can put some salt, but uh, I don't think so it's necessary. But I'm going to put some salt anyway. So I'm going to explain to you what are the ingredients we need here. Alright guys, come closer, come closer, come closer. Here, I hope you can see. Uh, these are all the ingredients uh, as a, like a... Uh, ornaments we need for making this uh, this black one oh my hand is nasty okay I'm going to use this finger to point <laughs> okay the black one is actually the black fungus so I have uh, soaked them and then chopped them into strips like this uh, you don't need to treat them just soak them and this is some cantarelle that I pick so you can use the shiitake mushroom if you have I don't have shiitake, so I'm using chanterelle. And over here, if you notice this one, like small fine uh, streams and fishes, right? I've got this in Singapore. Uh, traditionally, the recipe call for dried cuttlefish. Uh, it's, a cuttle, it's a cuttlefish that has been dried, and you cut them into strips. You can add them. Uh, it, that's a traditional way. But if you don't have them, something that are uh, able to give you uh, the fishy, uh, seafood uh, flavors this should work too and over here uh, these are dry shrimps uh, dry shrimps you just need to soak them uh, and then rinse them and then just chop them up all right so these are the ingredients uh, and over here I have some chicken uh, it called for what do you call that uh, pork but I don't like to eat pork so I'm going to be using chicken and over here I have some chicken stocks and over here I have tons of uh, garlic that I made this morning so I just minced garlic about 50 of them in a mixer uh, and then with some oil so and then I pour them into this bottle and then it becomes like a ready garlic paste that I can use anytime. So you can keep up to about one week. 
uh, and also some salt, some pepper and seasoning and sesame oil. I have um, oyster oil and I have some light soy sauce and I have some fish sauce. Alright, so this is all the ingredients we need to make this recipe. So meantime, I'm gonna just wash my hand because I get really irritated when it is like this. Just wash my hand properly. Okay, this is not looking so good. I'm gonna remove this. <laughs> Quite stubborn, yeah? It doesn't come up. It doesn't come up. Yeah, it's It's coming out. Okay, well, wipe my hand. And then you can come here and see me prepare this dish. Let me just see if I can show you guys closer. But before that, I need the bowl. I think I'm gonna get this plastic bowl. And I'm gonna fill this bowl with some oil. Just fill it with oil, quite a bit of oil, put it at the side and you come closer and you can see how I boil this. Okay, so this carrot cake is ready guys, almost done. So I'm going to off the heat now, it has been an hour, oh no, not that one, this one has to be on. So I'm offing the heat for the carrot cake and now I'm going to do the abacus. Okay, now water is hot. Take out the abacus and put them slowly, one by one. Uh, and usually, I like to have a, like a seed. Let me see if I can find the seed. I have one which is golden color. And I have no idea where it is. Let me see if I can find them here. Where's my seed? It's a new kitchen, you know. Everything is like so overwhelming. Sometimes I can't find myself. <laughs> okay, let me see. Oh, I should have kept it somewhere that I can remove. Anyway, I'm going to use this one. But I like it. I like the Chinese sea. So I'm going to try and find that later on. But because of the time concerned, I'm going to try to do this without that. I'm going to put the water here. And I'm going to put this one by one. Alright? And when it floats, it means that it is done. Give them a water bath. I think it's not a problem as long as it doesn't stick together. But don't put a whole lump in, right? Put the avocados one by one. So long as uh, it doesn't stick together. And then move it a bit. 
on the second part, you have to make sure it doesn't stick to the bottom. Make sure the water is hot, boil it. Don't put them in when it is cold. Okay, now it's suddenly cool down. Yeah? Maybe it's because it's too heavy. So I'm going to put down again. Uh, if it's a too much a big patch, you have to cook them two times. But I'm lazy. <laughs> no me. I'm going to put everything together and I'm just going to let them cook. Okay. So make sure water is keep boiling. Make sure you stir it and don't let it stick to the bottom. So my recipe is actually three times uh, the what do you call it the the recipe that I'm gonna send you. So that is only normal uh, that you it's not it's not three times sorry I got mixed up it's actually the carrot cake that was three times this is the normal recipe so don't adjust on the quantity all right you want to make sure you boil them and you see the one that is starting to float now they are actually quite ready but you want to make sure that they cook one more. See, they start to float. Okay, the one that are floating, they are done. So you want to make sure you have a ready with some oil. Yeah? very low so but this is very important okay and then now you want to transfer them over the bowl put much oil so you will not stick together and also mix them <laughs> Stick together. I'm gonna to up the heat now because it's boiling uh, and they are done, all of them. It's okay to have a bit of water, okay, so it's not dry up. Okay, 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 done. They are so cute looking. They look like this small little abalone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, this is what we do on a sun uh, on a Saturday afternoon here in Sweden. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you for joining me. So guys, this is how it looks like, but abacus is already been cooked. So now we are ready to stir fry this. They are a bit uh, tender, so it's very really good. Uh, I don't know whether you have to keep them. Let me just pour this water away. And then I'm going to transfer this over here so that I get my pan onto this side so I thought I tried to fry some shallots just now uh, so obviously a little bit burnt <laughs> but uh, it's, it's crispy I'm so glad that it's crispy so I'm going to put this in a small bowl so that uh, I can use that later on put this into a small bowl 
like this. Crispy, yeah, you can hear the sound. And don't wash the pan, okay? Because this pan is full of flavors from the from the shallots. Alright, this is done. And then you want to add a little bit more oil. Let me let you come closer so you can take a look closer. Okay, on the heat again. And then now you want to you want to stir fry the abacus. Some oil. I think this is enough, not so much. And then you want to fry the chicken. Uh, I always like to flavor my chicken, uh, but today I'm not doing that. So I'm going to add some garlic. This is garlic paste. So I'm just going to add a little bit of garlic with a bit of salt. Oh, my salt is gone. Here. Come here, salt. Yes. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, now the chicken is going in. Followed by the other dry cream. That one is even more dry. <laughs> okay. I think you can smell the fragrance from the dry cream absorbing the flavors and then let it just fry for a while until you can smell the fragrance, really fragrant, almost crispy on the outside. And then you can smell this already now. Ah, oh, so delicious. It smells so good. Okay, and then I'm going to put the chanterelle first, the chanterelle mushroom, followed by the fungus, the black fungus. everything to the side here and I'm going to pour everything back into 
to this plate. Okay, I'm going to pour everything into this plate. Just subscribe for one more minute. That is good, isn't it? So I put everything at the side. And then I'm going to add a little bit of oil and tons of garlic. I'm going to put about a tablespoon of garlic. Okay, let's try this for just a few seconds. And then I'm going to pour in the chicken stock. These are the chicken stock. Alright. And then I'm going to pour in my abacus. Oh, uh, you see it sticks together already. So don't worry, you are going to let this cook in the bouillon for a while. So you want to season this. And... Uh, mm. Nom 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 nom, so good. Okay. Uh, a little bit of oyster sauce. I will put about a teaspoon. Actually, there's no need to add any more salt because the uh, just a bit of sesame oil because the chicken stock is quite salty already. So just make sure that your abacus uh, not too salty. I add a little bit of salt in the water also just now before I. I cook them, I boil them. So you want to let the flavors of the, the stock suck in by the abacus. So you just let this simmer for a while. Yeah. And then, mm, and then put in the rest of the ingredients. Fry them. It smells so good, my goodness. Oh, I'm so hungry. I like to eat this now, right away. And then, followed by the fried shallot all in and then all in with the scallion and then we just split them around see the sauce is reducing so if you like you can add a little bit of water so that it's not so dry you want to do that Just a little of water, let it simmer for just another one, one or two more minutes. Alright. Ah, guys, this is looking so good. Mm. Like a pasta, like an Italian pasta. But this is made of taro. So I'm going to let this uh, simmer for just a few more seconds and then I'm going to pour in this uh, spring onion. Right. Okay, I'm going to off the heat now because it's cooking so much. It's done. 
it's done it's done it's done so like guys i'm gonna try and tell you what i think about this dish okay let me just pick a, one of the see if this is good or not let me just take on the glasses see it's uh, very tender it's very hot I didn't think that it will work, but it put, seems like. But again, bottom line, the flavors. Mm. 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 I'm sorry guys I'm really out of words <laughs> it was so good um, the only thing that I'm not happy is the flour all right uh, I think the proportion of the flour according to the recipes is uh, not right obviously the taro amount is far too little because for me I could only taste mostly the flour from the tapioca so it's very very chewy uh, it's not as uh, much taro as I want to so I would suggest that uh, I'm gonna do another research and see if I can find another recipe with more taro uh, I think obviously because of the taro is frozen too and when it is defrost it's coming out a lot of water it's not as good as the result is not as good as the fresh towel so i would suggest you buy fresh towel not frozen one because the consistency can be really out of the you know out of the border and uh, i just hope that one day i will master these again and create them uh, even better all right but so far so good i like the flavors of the sauce uh, everything goes really well i'm going to try and take a picture and i'm going to share them on my uh, Facebook and I'm gonna make a thumbnail from this picture and I hope you guys enjoy the recipes all right and do send me a comment and if you found another recipe that is even better send the link below in the comments so that I can look into that all right if you have a vlog and if you think that this recipe is not so good and yours is better also I would welcome you to do that all right we here is a community where we share ideas it's not just me I'm not I'm not a, a professional chef uh, I'm just like any one of you guys just interested in trying out res recipes that works <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't work <laughs> so but we'll see all right thank you for watching I hope you guys enjoy this video if you do please share and if you haven't yet subscribed please subscribe I love to have you in my live streaming both here and in Facebook and do check out my Facebook because I update information every day and over here in YouTube I usually like to do live streaming cooking only on weekend so if you have time during weekend and you like what I'm doing please subscribe and find out more about me at patreon all right thank you bye bye